Hello, everyone. How are you doing? This is Dr. Cecily. I am live again. I wanted to tell you about some of the things that are going on here in my little humble place of Chiang Mai and the things that I'm doing and things that you can look forward to. I have been uh, very blessed to meet uh, Dr. Angela Longo and do an interview with her. And then I met the wonderful Francis, who used to be a Buddhist nun um, from the UK. And we talked about some healing things. So what I decided to do is take us on a journey of what I'm going to call a metaphysician's healing stories of these different people that have basically come in contact with and that have been a blessing. Um, I have another gentleman I have yet to see if we can get the interview uh, for at this present time. His name is John, and he's been um, dealing with some cancer here in Chiang Mai. Uh, that's just what he's been doing in healing. So I'm going to wait to meet him today and see if he will be doing an interview with us and we can put it apart our series. So as, as my title said, most people blame others for their life. And, and I said, I will not. I take full responsibility. And I said, you should too. Because if you think about the people that you meet, they bring something to you at the time in your life. Some part of healing, some part of something new that turns on into you. So I know it might sound strange. I know it might seem like out of the box because we're so used to well, my mama, my brother, my sister, my friend, and I take that on as a challenge. Some people have been in my life that, you know, they have totally blessed me. I'm getting relaxed, as you can see, have totally blessed me in uh, a beautiful way of making me into the person that I am today. If I was not that person, um, if they had not come into my life, I would not learn lessons. So sometimes not all lessons come in what you see at the time in a good form. Lessons come and you learn from them no matter what they are sometimes and sometimes you don't. And sometimes those lessons have to be repeated over and over and over again in order for you to get the lesson that you could have gotten the first time. So sometimes it becomes even more much harder for you to understand the lessons in life. And I know some people, you know, say, well, everything should be just smooth and positive and sailing and, you know, life should be blessings and there should be no humps in the road. Well, <clears throat> just imagine if you were a baby and you're starting to walk, do you not fall until you learn to walk correctly? Do you not stumble and lose food when you, you're learning to eat food as a baby until you get it all over your face and make a mess? This is how I look at it. I want to look at it from a different point of view instead of looking at, you know, others and blaming them and saying, you know, and yes, sometimes it does, they take part into it. But I also believe that when we come here, before we come here into this being, we ask other people to be in our life for us to learn these lessons in life. Um, so <clears throat> I thought it would be wonderful to sit down and talk about our tales of what we do and how we heal ourselves. You know, when we walk in our full beauty and sometimes we get lessons because we don't speak up and those lessons become abundant and abundant and people walk over us or we we allow people to walk over us we allow people to not really respect us because we have not spoken up so our voices are not heard because we don't speak up so until we speak up um those lessons or situation keep being placed in our life for us to learn like, okay, I, I should have spoke up, but I didn't speak up, but now I'm speaking up and you'll see that lesson go away. These are all lessons to get us to be the person that 
we want to be to be able to function to be able to learn to be able to love and be able to humor other people um i made me a good uh pot of uh well a, a cup of mugwort tea and elderberry um to clear out some debris that i have accumulated walking around uh, and to prevent any throat infections or cold. Um, <clears throat> what I learned is also being here that uh, different things and mucus actually accumulates from something so simple that is waiting to arise unless we eradicate it or as I would like to say, get rid of it. So until we get rid of it, it's sitting right there um, just waiting for us to get rid of. Okay, the light is much better, even though I'm, I was relaxing. Um, okay, the light is much better. I don't want you to see just this face and not a blob. <laughs> so, I have met some wonderful people in the world from uh, different psychics, uh, different healers before I even got uh, to Thailand and I met some wonderful people when I was in Belize and uh, Rick Harris a yoga instructor as well as his beautiful wife um, another yoga instructor and healer and at the time she was pregnant and I look at this little baby as I watch them grow up and now they're in the um, United States and it's like Wow, it's a different view of things, of diff seeing different people, and actually just being surrounded to different healers. Like when I was in Arizona, <clears throat> surrounding myself in that community and meeting different people was really wonderful as well. But I noticed through my travels, I've been gravitating or meeting to other healers. Um, for the last eight years, like I'm finding them unintentionally, you know, like, oh, well, I was looking for a store and um, passed by the store in Glenside and it was in a Mancelli's uh, store, Shine On. And it was a beautiful store. I walked in and uh, seen some crystals, bought some crystals. Then I seen in and I received a Reiki session and then I came in and she had some classes and she was doing the medicine wheel and me being the inquisitive self that I am, I wanted to learn about these beautiful medicine wheels. So I invited myself and brought some others and uh, different things and then we learned about the Southwest uh, Feng Shui that was there and that was another young lady, I believe her name was Sue. And she was talking about the difference of the feng shui that was in the southwest because of the desert and the dry area. So that was a blessing. By meeting them, I met some other healers, uh, opening myself because I wanted to go to a sweat. And my first sweat, uh, sweat lodge, was a sister sweat lodge where sisters got together on the full moon and we sweated together in Phoenix, Arizona in a native, in the native way, which was really interesting for me because I learned to do uh, the sweat with them. And then from there, it involved that I met, I went to Sweet Medicine because I wanted to do another sweat lodge. And I did it with the Sweet Medicine. And then I came in contact with Karen from the Sweet Medicine Lodge. And she introduced me or told me about the class is called Shiloquai Kwadosha, and that was sacred sexual healing. So she introduced me to this understanding of learning. And at the time I was actually in school uh, working on my doctorate and I wanted that to be part of my dissertation of doing sacred sexuality and seeing the connection with them. So I did these courses, um, over the next, I want to say the next five years of going to the different sweat, actually being part of the different sweats, but also walking behind the scenes and assisting and fixing the food of the different sweats, which was really wonderful for me. 
and being um being outside it was really wonderful so for me i love when i meet different people because they show me different things and just taking my spirituality my connection with the earth with the elements with other people that are in the walk of studying to a new level and that is such a beautiful thing when you can see the beauty of it all you know so i decided i wanted to take you guys on a journey with me for a couple of series i don't know my two eyes are watering i don't know who i will meet when i go to my other places of healing um i like to be part of like i like going to the temples i like uh, seeing the different monks and the people that i've encountered i'm i'm loving you know that aspects and that part of my life that i've been around and i'm always coming under a cluster of meeting other people when i was in florida i was looking for just um reiki meditation and i came to the temple spiritual wellness and i met individuals there and different ones had different effects because i met different groups different the group was different energy was different on thursday than it was on sunday sunday was a different element and thursday was a group of different elements of people and thursday night healing um did the same thing but there was no um lessons or pearl of wisdom that was being added versus sunday you get the pearl of wisdom um from the reverend there which was nice or different uh speakers that were put on place to share their wisdom with you which was nice and the beautiful music the, um that's how i met um uh, my star sister uh monica monica d she's a wonderful individual she does spiritual readings um reading cards and she's an ordained minister as well and just a wonderful uh individual to meet um met another reverend um met a, a lot of reverends basically there um that were there at the temple spiritual wellness and i met a wonderful wonderful friend um gary which is so, such a sweetie he has um and he plays a flute and uh, a guitar and his music and elements and doing different things and he was from scotland and just he's a beautiful soul. So, um certain people that you meet in your life and they're there for a moment and then certain people you meet in your life and they're there for a while that you keep in touch with. And some of my friends or some of my associates are surprised that I, uh, you know, I reach out and say, "Hello, how are you doing?" They were on my mind, so I call you. So, you know, that is why they uh left an imprint and printed impression on me. in my life I met Chris from um the grassroots and doing a sweat in um St. Petersburg grassroots community. So that to me was also beautiful and I keep in touch with her and she took me to a native um American um church and showed me some things and got to meet different people. So that in itself was wonderful. Just meeting and being around these different environments that's what i love i love uh meeting these people and getting involved so i want you to know not all bad experiences are really bad at the time you're going through the situation it's really tough and i'm not going to deny that but when you're going through this situations look at it and see what you can learn from it and when you're in the eye of the midst of it it is really 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 tough it's not easy so don't let my um appearance of feeling really like it's nothing it's sometimes it's very a hard walk and a hard to get your mind together about your walk and what you're doing and what you're supposed to learn so don't you know knock it you know i i'm just had some you know some time to really meditate and that was on my mind and and for me to get up this morning and actually share with you 
about my journey. So I hope you will take and consider your journey and the the information that I, I've shared with you and see it in another light and your walk in your life journey and the story and the characters that you put in have a different spin. This has been Dr. Cecily D'Angelo, the med physician, aka medicine woman. So I want you to know I am blessed and I want you to have a blessed day. I say life, love, longevity, and prosperity to all of us. Ashe and Mara.